Hi my friends, I'm presenting you with the Vedic Astrological Outlook uh, Part 1, especially looking at 2020 to 2021. But I would like firstly to begin with the 60 year Jupiter cycle in Vedic Astrology. Jupiter has a cycle of 60 years which is known as Sangvatsara in Sanskrit. And um, just briefly, in 2020, this year is called Chaturvari in Sanskrit, which means darkness, which could lead darkness. In other words, not a great year, which could lead to food shortages, which probably we have not yet seen. Um, each lunar year that we calculate, if we want to calculate how things are going to go for a particular country in a given year, we calculate from uh, generally from March uh, or April uh, of each year to March or April of the next year. That's the lunar year in, um, in Vedic astrology. So the 60 year cycle firstly that we're going to look at or mention a little bit about is from February 19th of 1961 till December 21st of 2020. And there we have a Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. And we're going to talk a lot about the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction in the subsequent uh, videos on this subject. Firstly, Jupiter is a very, very positive planet and it represents positive change, growth, expansion. Jupiter in Sanskrit, the name for Jupiter is Guru, Guru. The Guru, as we know, is a teacher. In English we mean, we use it as teacher, spiritual teacher, or perhaps the expert in a field. So Jupiter is the Guru. So what does he bring? He brings enlightenment. He brings knowledge. He brings understanding. He brings revelation and realization and epiphany. I dare say we could use an epiphany here, my friends, a major awakening. I don't think many of you would disagree. Saturn, on the other hand, represents old structures, entrenched power institutions, and the old guard. Sometimes the old guard, whatever the, the, the structure may be that's been set into motion long ago, has reached its sell-by date. It's outdated, outmoded, it's no longer working, its ideas are old and outdated, and it needs to be replaced. The old guard does not go easily, my friends, since when have you ever seen that happen? People cling to power. How old is Robert Mugabe when he got in the last time? 93? I mean, come on, my friend, take a rest already. You know, so... These institutions do not want to let go of power and prestige. So we can expect what? Power struggles over the best way to rule. Now let's point out, we had a major financial reversal and crash, which I did predict astrologically back in 08, 09, which led to a 10 year recession. And the, what happened there was the financial institutions, the, in, the banks, the investment banks, the stock market, uh, political um, leaders, accountancy firms, etc., lost the run of themselves. And due to what? Due to greed, due to avarice. That's why. Hmm? So, uh, what happened? What changes have been introduced and have been made since that time in the past 10 years? How have they changed the system? They haven't. Not that I've seen. Have you seen it? No, they didn't. They did quantitative easing. I have um, um, clients who are bankers in uh, London, Zurich, uh, New York, and I'm saying, well, there should be a crash. Why isn't there a crash? Recently, in the last couple, two, three years, they said, yeah, there should be, but uh, they're propping it up. Yeah, of course. We'll see now. 
So this is a power shift toward the progressive, away from the old and entrenched and calcified ideas that have outlived their usefulness. It's a changing of the guard. This cultural shift that's going to take place beginning in the next couple of years, especially in 2021, will be irrevocable. And it will be, as, as I said, much needed. Whether we're ready or not, guess what? We're going to get it. Now, Saturn, uh, the conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter, the exact degree of conjunction, December 21st, 2020, exactly on the winter solstice of this year, by the way. Isn't that interesting and coincidental? Jupiter will be in Capricorn and Saturn will be in Capricorn at the exact same degree. Uh, Jupiter is debilitated in Capricorn. So that means that Jupiter is at his weakest. A planet can be debilitated in one sign out of 12. So you got a 1 in 12 shot of having a, a debilitated planet. Okay? So that means the teacher is at his weakest. That means the class isn't listening. We're not paying attention. Debilitation also means it's not necessarily, it does not necessarily mean that that planet is negative across the board. It means that there are underlying lessons that must be learned in order to transform the negative into a positive and come out the other end having learned something and having built a better structure in this case. Saturn, conversely, is in his own sign. So when a planet is in his own sign, Saturn, Capricorn, he's much stronger and he's more powerful. So he actually has the edge. Uh, Saturn represents what? It represents these old regimes and the old guard and the old systems. So he actually has uh, a greater edge against Jupiter, which means that what? They're not going to go quietly. They're not going to go easily. There will have to be a struggle. There will have to be conflict. There will have to be some kind of a fight. So let us look at some history, shall we? John F. Kennedy became president in January of 1961, right in the year that the 60-year cycle began. He proved to be a real threat to the old guard and the establishment status quo, which included the U.S. political and financial system, the mafia, by the way, and also commun communist Cuba, which is right on, I mean, you can almost see them from, from Florida to, to Cuba. You can almost see it on a clear day. It's really close. So much so did he... Uh, threaten these institutions that they had him assassinated November 22nd, 1963. Now, those of you who know a little bit about numerology, notice the numbers, 1122. Mm, master numbers. So the hope for change that Kennedy represented had been defeated. So that's a win for the establishment. In 1961, the UN General Assembly also condemned apartheid, which overthrew or abolished apartheid, uh, as far as we know, since that day, since that time, I should say, a forward in South Africa. In uh, 1961, the Berlin Wall was built. They erected the Berlin Wall between East and West Berlin, East Berlin, of course, was communist, belonging to the USSR, and West Berlin was open and free, belonging to a free Germany. Um, and the Berlin Wall stood for 30 years. So it took another 30 years for communism to fall. Isn't that interesting? Another 30 years before the, the Berlin Wall came down and, and the USSR revoked communism and became an open society and all these other countries could then gain their own for the most part their own independence and autonomy thank god for that 
Um, Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin completes the first orbit of the Earth by a human being, also in 61. And then they had in 62 the Cuban Missile Crisis, where the Soviets sent missiles, placed them in Cuba, aimed them at the U.S. So this was real saber rattling on the, right on the door of the U.S. So Kennedy went in and he faced them off and uh, they backed down and they removed the missiles. So those are some of the things that began happening with this shift. And of course, our friend Bob Dylan, he wrote a very famous song in the 60s. We know what happened in the 60s. There was a huge shift in consciousness and awareness. Yes, it was fueled by uh, an expansion of consciousness and awareness brought on by the use of um, marijuana, uh, psychedelics, LSD, uh, peyote, etc. But that, for the most part, led to people going into a state of a mutual love and appreciation for each other like never before. I've never experienced it again since that time in my lifetime. And I'll be 70 this year. And it was a wonderful time. You know, people, strangers from all around the world, had, were, seemed to be on the same wavelength. It was truly uh, um, a wonderful time. And Bob Dylan wrote, and the times, they are changing. So this will be the end of part one.